I am so thrilled to be with you this week because with me is Mr. David Chilton. David has been helping authors and teaching publishers how to get more sales, how to get more juice out of their, their book orange. And he has developed an enormous set of courses. He's got an entire class program that he put together. Now, David, if I remember correctly, you were doing individual consulting and one-on-one -on -one work, but that got to be a little overwhelming, correct? Well, I mean, the crazy thing about all of this is I don't make a penny from any of it. So all of the authors I helped over the years, I charged nothing when I flew down to speak to the Random Houses, the Simon & Schusters, the Primas, all the places I've met you over the years. I never charged for any of that. I was trying to give back to the publishing industry, but I'm busy now. I was on Dragon's Den, the equivalent of Shark Tank up in Canada. I invested in a lot of companies, and I've got a million things on the go. So three years ago, two years ago, I decided to put together this course. It's 170 videos. I gave the material, I did not charge one penny, and there's a small charge from the distributor for it, and I'm thrilled with the way it's going over. So I don't care I'm not being compensated. Selfishly, I'm happy I can push people onto the course instead of answering all the individual questions, but it's been an interesting learning experience. You know, I thought we were giving a lot of information out there with detail that people wouldn't know. So I've always said the course does an excellent job of showing people how to do the what to do. But what I've learned is a lot of people didn't even know what to do. And so even in the corporate sales market, most people weren't trying. In fact, I've spoken to major publishers in the last six months who are now using the Chilton Method videos on corporate sales exclusively to move books into that arena because they weren't doing any of these things before. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been a further learning experience. Publishing is a fascinating field. Oftentimes people think it's a horrible field. It's so competitive and margin suppression, but that's not the case. The margins are actually quite healthy in this business compared to many others. If you know what you're doing, Publishing and selling books can be very, very lucrative indeed. One of my favorite things about David's methods and about the Chilton method in particular is paying attention to what is actually working. And David, you spend a lot of time paying attention to what's working today as opposed to what was working 10 years ago. Yeah, no question. I mean, uh, and, and again, I'm Mr. Test. And so we test everything almost to an obsessive compulsive level, to be honest with you. We were involved in A-B testing 30 years ago before it came common with online marketing. And so, yeah, the course is up today. We talk a lot, for example, about podcast marketing and how podcasts now are actually one of the best ways to move books. Even podcasts, interesting, with relatively small audiences can be incredibly effective book marketing machines because you have the right audience. And the penetration rate tends to be abnormally high, but they also tend to be the influencers in that industry, and therefore the word of mouth tends to prosper. So there's all kinds of new marketing techniques, and as always, you've got to get out there and play the numbers game. There's going to be rejection. There's going to be frustration. But in this business, when you are seeking success on media coverage, on special sales, whatever, one is one, two is four, and three is ten. You start building momentum and the success starts to be getting more success. You start getting more confidence. And maybe most importantly, you can use those successes, those testimonials as credibility builders, as social proof. And that's where things start taking off. And if you have a really good book, a truly good book, word of mouth, of course, is your strongest ally. But to get the word of mouth to kick in, you have to hit a critical mass point. And that's not easy in the early days. Anybody who says it is, is lying to you. It's not. But you can do it. And we're still seeing a lot of people rise above the noise right now and have great success selling books. And I think the Chilton Method, I hope, has played a big role in that. Today, we're going to talk primarily about the corporate sales and partnerships because that's been by far the most impactful section of the course. Interestingly, I didn't see that coming. I was very proud of that section, but I'm proud of the whole course, to be honest with you. And I thought we'd all draw rave reviews and tons of calls, and it has, but that section has gone over gangbusters. You know, we have major publishers using all of the advice in that section. We've had self-publishers, many of them, land huge deals, 8,000, 10,000, 25,000, two at 70,000 books. In some instances, they're full books. In other instances, they're physical excerpts. We've had a number of people land e-excerpt deals or unlimited downloads of e-books for a flat fee. There are a lot of ways to market books to corporate partners, and that section goes through them all in very fine detail. Well, as you know, this is a special edition of Free Advice Friday where we are focusing on corporate sales and where you very generously and kindly agreed to come and answer our questions because that's what Free Advice Friday is all about. It's an ask me anything. We've got a number of questions that authors have asked 
me and they've asked me to share with you about corporate sales. And so is it okay with you if I can I fire put away. You on the spot a bit? Yeah, yeah, fire away. For the sake of those of us who maybe don't fully understand some of the definitions, can we start real ground? Let's start right at the ground. What is your definition of corporate sales? Well, I, I think that they're almost a bulk sale. You're selling many units at one time, normally to a corporate partner, although it sometimes can be an association or a nonprofit, but it's any entity that is taking the book and for their own purposes, using it. In some instances, they're giving it out to employees because they view it as an educational tool and they're trying to make their employees better informed or less stressed and therefore more productive, whatever. But in most instances, they're using it to help their marketing efforts. And so the Wealthy Barber, for example, was purchased by Microsoft and they put it in the old box of Microsoft money. Back when we used to get software in boxes, that type of thing. And the number of opportunities in this field is absolutely amazing. And it's shocking to me how few people pursue them. And I would argue this is the best space of all in the book industry to sell books. Remember, all the deals are non-returnable, all of them. You get the order up front. So even if you are printing on demand, now you have enough of an order you can go to offset printing and lower your unit cost dramatically. It's such a great field and books are perfect for it because you can customize the cover. You can change the first page to be a letter from the CEO. And those types of things are very well received by the buying market. Books are relatively inexpensive to ship. There's so many positives to this and there's so many ways at it. You know, I talked a moment ago, you don't have to just sell your full physical book. You can sell excerpts like the Wiley people did with all the dummies books so successfully. You can sell e-excerpts. So I'm, I'm giving you a long answer, but I want to give you a very good example, the kind of thing we've been teaching people to do where they've been having huge success and never before had even thought of it. Right now, of course, the world is full of companies trying to do online marketing. And in many instances, they're trying to lead gen, they're trying to generate leads. In other words, they're trying to capture contact information. They have to give something to those prospects in order for the prospect to volunteer their email, their phone numbers, whatever. Well, what better than an e-excerpt of a book at the target audience that really fills their needs, fills their desires for more knowledge? This is something you're seeing all the time now. So now you have a major insurance company, for example, will e-excerpt a book on dealing with flood damages. And they'll put it out there and they'll say, you get chapters two and three that'll really help you. All you have to do is provide your information. For them, it's raising their rate of performance, their success rate in terms of getting clicks and getting contact information dramatically. So they're happy to pay you 2,500, 5,000, 7,500. They're not paying 50, 75, and 100,000. I haven't seen those deals. But deals for 10,000 or less, those are plentiful. Think about it. You're getting all of that exposure, but you're also getting the profit, the 2,500, the 5,000, whatever. It's unbelievable. And in their marketing program, your book, again, is being mentioned repeatedly. And we have found that when people get the e-excerpt, if they like it, they go buy the book at Amazon. Only a click away. So all of this feeds off itself so nicely. So going back to the original question, what is a corporate sale? It's really any partnership where you're helping an entity to get what they want, to raise more money in the case of a fundraiser, to teach their employees in the case of trying to educate the people that work for them, or in most instances, the market their wares more successfully. Now you actually teach a course on this, and so I'm not asking you to repeat everything that you just put right. into the, the most updated, but I do have, I'm asking, would you be willing to take just a moment and share with us the 30,000 foot view of how somebody might get an idea started? How did they start with the list of who to approach? Well, one thing I love about this part of the business, it's so much different than pursuing media because when you pursue media, so is everybody else. When you get in touch with the producer of the Today Show or even the producer of a radio show, they're hearing from a tremendous number of people. When you reach out to a corporate sale opportunity, somebody in the marketing department at a major company, do you know how many people they're hearing from with this kind of thing? Almost nobody. You get your return call. You get your day in court, especially if you put together a truly professional kit. And we walk you through, again, in fine detail, how to put together a kit that speaks well of you, that speaks well of your book, that captures attention, that builds that early momentum, maybe most importantly, that intrigues the person. And that's a powerful word because in the marketing and the corporate sales, you're trying to intrigue the person to take that next step, to see the possibilities. So again, we walk you through all that. And the fun thing is the kits aren't really that full of things. There's usually a testimonial or two. There's a short letter. There's a two or four sample books. And here's why this works type pitch and off you go. Then it comes down to the old fashioned follow up phone calls and emails. But again, unlike media, 
you're not dealing with a lot of competition. Others aren't getting in touch. Marketing minds, when you're in the marketing department and dealing with people, they tend to be very open-minded. They tend to be very creative. They tend to look at this. In many instances, they'll say no, but they will, as I said earlier, give you your day in court. And if you have a book that looks professional, excellent cover, excellent title, excellent subtitle, half the battle is won. So the possibilities are significant. We've got lots of people watching the course and they'll say, put 10 irons in the fire simultaneously. Well, this isn't hundreds of kids going out like a media binge. This is 10 irons in the fire and you fold them up every so often. The amount of work in terms of hours is very limited, but the potential reward is huge. And so the risk reward ratio, the cost benefit analysis, I've always said with all the deals I did on Dragon's Den, again, the Canadian equivalent of Shark Tank, with all the investments I've made in my life, I've never seen a better ROI return on investment than pursuing corporate sales with books. Low cost in terms of capital, low cost in terms of time, but when you get the sale, the profits are absolutely astronomical. I know back in the day when I was with, uh, you know, bigger houses and we would do corporate sales, and you mentioned this at the beginning of, of our talk, that one of the big things that you can do that they love is you start right out by saying, we can craft this book and we can brand it with your logo. We can put a special chapter in just for you. So and the, one of the wonderful things about technology today, especially with digital printing, is that you could create a, a special chapter for someone or a special forward just from, you could literally put the forward in from the CEO of the company you're talking to and have them give it to all their employees and do a quick offset run in five to six weeks and get the books to them far less than than doing a print on demand but my question for you david is 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 this really possible for small presses and independently published authors absolutely in fact you know again i'm not trying to oversell here but i would say the vast majority of the successes that we've seen in the corporate sales market strangely have come from independent presses and self-published authors because they've taken the initiative to make the efforts we find a lot of the big publishing houses frankly are very weak at this I told a story recently in an interview of one of the big books that we've seen in North America in the last couple of years, one of the truly big books. And it did exceptionally well in retail. And honestly, I give the publisher nothing but plaudits. They did a phenomenal job. But I talked to the agent involved. And this was a huge book, zero corporate sales. This book was mm -hmm. built for corporate sales. I don't mean to be rude, but in my sleep, I could have sold hundreds of thousands of copies of this book into the corporate sales market, zero. Publishers are not particularly strong at this. That's why a lot of them are using the course and taking the ideas and following up on them. So when over the years helping people, what I've seen over and over again, a lot of independent publishers have a lot of get up and go. That's why they're doing it in the first place. They like to be in control. They're not afraid to get out there and get the kits in people's hands, maybe face some rejection, et cetera. You know, this is a very basic tip. Most of the course has got pretty deep tips and, and a lot of subtle details. This one's a basic one, but it's so key to remember. When you have a target audience, one of your best ways to get corporate sales is to ask yourself, not how do I get at that target audience, but instead, who already is dealing with that target audience? So I wanna give you an example because it really drives that home successfully. We've had two different women come to us in the last, say, three years, who've written books, in one case for dentists, and in the other case for dentists and doctors, patients, to take the fear out for young kids of going to visit the dentist or the doctor. In both cases, they tried ineffectively to get at the individual doctors and dentists. Mass mailings, all kinds of things, they got very little traction. They came to us and we said, don't do that. Go to the suppliers that are already dealing with those people. So in the case of the dentists, dentists go to people who are supplying the major equipment or supplying, for heaven's sakes, even the toothpaste that they use in the machines, whatever. They're trying to deepen their relationship. They're trying to ingratiate themselves to those people. They'll be happy to use a book like yours, very professionally done. They can customize the cover, they can put their logo on, all the things you mentioned. Both women got deals within a few weeks, within a few weeks, both of them. And again, it doesn't surprise me because I've seen it over and over and over again. And again, you think about the company in the dental supply industry. Let's say they're creating one of the drills. You think they're getting a lot of calls from people in the book industry looking to cross promote? Of course they're not. And because they're not getting any calls, they tend to be more open-minded and they tend to think, yeah, this makes sense. It's a nice little gift. We can get our logo. How many companies out there do you think would like to have a book sitting on all the tables in dentist's office and doctor's office with their logo on it. In some instances, it won't do them that much good because they're not selling directly to the public. But in many instances, it would be a huge, huge opportunity for some good marketing. You can see the possibilities here are endless. We had a guy come to see us years ago, very fine guy, and he'd written a book on debt management for university students. 
couldn't seem to, again to get at the university students in any kind of cost-effective fashion. So I just said to him, who else is trying to get at them? Well, recruiters, credit card companies, interesting and ironically, because he's trying to help them with debt management. But all kinds of companies are trying to get at graduate students and get at students in their last year. So he ended up going to a trade show, seeing who was there, and then reaching out to a number of them with a letter. He got a big deal. I think 50,000 copies, by the way. That's a big deal. So there are a lot of ways to do this. It requires some creativity, but I would argue none of this is that deep. Like, I don't think we're that sharp. I've always said when people contact us, how do you guys do this? I always say we're not that smart. We just are trying harder. We're getting our kits out. We're using common sense. We pay attention to detail, though. Like, when we write a kit, we make sure it's short and punchy. We make sure it flows. We make sure the copy's very good. We make sure we give them ample free copies because nothing sells a book like the book itself if it's well done. So we do the little things well, but none of them are that deep. Now, David, the course, the course that you're teaching, does it include information about how to write good copy and, and how to get the, the punchy pitch? It does. We talk a lot about how chunky paragraphs are absolutely pivotal now. There's some great research in the last three or four years on how much we're all changing in terms of the way we digest information. Unfortunately, fortunately, I don't know what your perspective is, but the Internet has definitely made us all ADD-oriented. And we do not watch things the way we used to. We not read things the way we used to. I mean, you look at videos. At one point, remember, they said your video shouldn't be longer than five to seven minutes. Now it's down. It shouldn't be longer than two to three minutes. You've got eight seconds to attract people's attention. When you first have them open up an email or anything else, it used to be 12. Now, that doesn't sound like much of a difference. But remember, that's 33% less than it used to be. And it's trending down. That's very little time. So you have to be short, punchy. Your headline is pivotal. Your subheadline is pivotal. And again, chunky paragraphs. Nobody wants to look at long text anymore. They don't want a two-page letter. These are the things you have to keep in perspective. Just to move over to the book industry, interestingly, we're seeing it take place there. Male readers in particular, but even female readers, who want shorter chapters. And it's funny because the length of the book doesn't necessarily have to change, although shorter books are selling better now than they ever have, but they want shorter chapters. They want punchier information. That's just the way people want their things now. Don't fight it. You have to harness what the public wants. Your job is to give them the great information, but give it to them in a format they're going to find acceptable, digestible, they'll be enthusiastic about, et cetera. So we cover off all of that in great detail throughout the course. And what about advice about how much to charge, especially you mentioned ebooks and e excerpts? Yeah, that's a tricky one. The e on how, how to charge for that? Yeah, we have a, a couple videos in there on how to develop your discount schedule and why, in many instances, you're a little, little better to be more aggressive with your discount schedule because they are non returnable sales. They tend to be big deals, thousands of copies, and you want the deal to go through. Selfishly, you always want to make these happen. You don't want price to stand in the way because, again, it's not just the money you make up front, it's the word of mouth that generates. You now have a very credible company buying your book, and you can tell other companies about that. All those types of things help. So more aggressive for the most part. It very much depends on your printing cost and a number of other factors. Selling e-excerpts, that's a tricky one because you're often dealing with companies with limited budgets. And one of the things we learned that I did not know at all, even the huge companies do a tremendous number of small tests. So we were dealing with one of the biggest online companies in the world using this idea. And the first test they were doing was only, I think, either $2,500 or $4,500, one of the two. That's how much they were spending on their advertising. So, of course, they didn't want to write us a check for thousands and thousands of dollars. So they came and they said, we'll give you $1,000. i am making this up. It was something like that. Have a very small number of downloads available at the excerpt. But if it works, then we'll do a bigger test at $2,500 and then one at $7,500. That's how you have to play that game. But, again, you have no cost of goods sold. You have no printing. You have no shipping, you have no distribution, you have no hassle factor. All of this goes straight to your bottom line and it exposes your book. And if you get the right partner and they do multiple campaigns using your book, it can really add up. The other thing we talk about a lot in the course that I think is exciting and I deserve zero credit for this. My son came up with this, so I give him full credit. He approached me years ago and said, Dad, I watch a lot of Netflix, who doesn't? And he said, what about this model? We go to one of the major financial institutions with the Wealthy Barber Returns, the follow-up to the Wealthy Barber, and we offer them unlimited downloads of the ebook, and they pay a flat fee. So unlimited downloads. And initially, my reaction was, hey, that'll be some cannibalization problem. I don't know what unlimited. We have to put a cap on it. How much are you looking for? And he was very sketchy on the details. He hadn't spoken to them yet. Well, he got back to me a little while later, and he said, unlimited downloads, but maybe we'll cap it at the number of clients they have, the main clients, whatever. But he said the pay is $400,000. $400,000. 
I said, yes, I'm not an idiot. Really? You said yes. yes. Shocking. Yes. And what's crazy about that deal is, remember, we have no cost of goods sold. We have no distribution. We have no shipping. We have no inventory. We have no hassle. We delivered the e-versions of the book. Well, the funny thing is the company thought it was a great deal because they can use it in so many ways to deepen relationships with clients, to garner contact information and contests, educational reasons, et cetera. You're going to see more and more of these types of deals. And Scott's working on another big one right now. He's had a couple other deals with clients. I mean, the possibilities in corporate sales and they're truly endless. So here's another example that I really like. A year ago, a fellow came to Scott and he said, I've written a book on disability savings plans. And it's a registered plan like a 401k, like an IRA in the States or an RRSP in Canada, but for disabled people. It allows them to save excessive amounts of money, or not excessive, extreme amounts of money, which is great. But very few people know all the subtleties to the plans. And this fellow done a great job in this book. Well, Scott ended up taking to one of the major financial institutions. They bought 5,000 copies and they're about to buy 5,000 more. These are not that tricky. The financial institution says, what a great resource. We have all kinds of clients who don't understand the nuances of that. What a great way to educate them and to deepen our relationship so they make the purchase. You see this over and over again. There's a fellow in Canada who sold 100,000 copies of a book on how to juggle because a lot of companies bought it because juggling tends to reduce stress. Plus, it's a fun activity for people to share at work. He packaged it with three little um, bags to juggle with, et cetera. Again, the possibilities in this space are endless, and very few people are pursuing any of them. Wow. David, you've been so generous of your time. Do you mind if I ask you just one or two more questions? No, of course not. Well, we just, we've got a number of questions that have come in and, um, and feel free to, you know, to laugh at any of these or say no, but one of the questions I get more, more often than anything is people asking me about these catalog companies. There's one down in South Florida. There's another one in Arizona. There's one out in Connecticut, but there's these catalog companies where, for, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, you can list your book in the catalog and they send hundreds of thousands of copies of these 300 page catalogs out to different corporations to be considered for corporate sales. They've got a supposedly an online sales team. I'm curious, have you ever done anything like that? What, what has been your experience about putting these 10 kits out and then following up versus let's say going with a catalog? We've had, 50 times the success doing it ourselves. And I've known very few people who've done well through the catalogs. I'm not going to say none. I remember one fellow in the States had two big deals through one of the catalog companies years ago, but very few people have had success. The follow-up is important. And the customized approach. When you reach out to the C-level executives or the head of marketing, you want to tell her, tell him exactly what you're thinking, why this will work, et cetera. You don't want it just in there with a number of other books. And again, most people won't look at the catalog in the first place. And then it's not customized either. So I'm not saying don't do it if the cost is very low. It may be an okay exposure vehicle. But very few people have had success going that route. I'm a much bigger fan of reaching out yourself, putting together a strong kit. Remember, a lot of authors, nonfiction authors, really know their industry well. They know the participants. They know the different players. They know who's looking for what, what could be a good match, how people are marketing their wares, how people are marketing their services, and how, therefore, their book may fit in and make people pay more attention or make people more likely to cut that check, et cetera. I mean, books can be a tremendous thank you gift. What would you rather get, an outstanding book or a co another coffee mug or another oh. one of the hats? I mean, we don't need any more of those. Those are viewed as cheap tchotchke, but you're actually complimented when you receive a copy of a book subconsciously you think people are saying to you, you're well-read, you're a learner, you want to grow. People love getting books as gifts. And especially if the book is already well-known, but that's not always the case. In fact, as I said to you earlier, I truly have seen more independent presses and self-publishers have success in this space than big publishers because they put more effort in. They come up with more creative ideas. They follow up more aggressively. And again, they've got one book. And so they're passionate about their one book. And they're out there marketing to all the people in their industry or related industries where the big publishers get caught up in whatever's hot that season and oftentimes don't have the resources to throw behind their entire title list of 40, 60, 80 copies. For those of you who are watching this on a replay, or even if you're watching it live on Free Advice Friday, which is every Friday at 10 a.m., you will notice that right below David's face and or right below my face, you see a URL there. It is newshelves.com slash corporate. Newshelves.com slash corporate. This is a website that David has very kindly set up. We link right to a page 
where he is giving you an opportunity to check out his course. As he said right at the beginning, he doesn't get anything. He simply pays for the distribution to the distribution model and for the folks who support the course. But this particular course covers so much more than corporate sales. But that's what we're talking about today here on Free Advice Writing. David has been answering a number of questions. A couple of you have sent me some questions ahead of time because you know on Free Advice Friday, I'm always happy to take questions early. You just go to newshelves.com slash corporate and you will be able to watch this as a replay, but you'll also be able, if you click on that link, to go right to David's site where he tells you a lot more about the course that he's teaching. David, one or two more quick questions. You've been sure. so generous with your time, but one of the questions I know that I'm going to be asked is if someone purchases this course but doesn't have the time to put these kits together themselves, is this a course they can share with a coworker or an assistant so that they can do the work for them? Yeah, I mean, I believe that there are two different uh, devices have access to the course, and we've had a lot of people do that. But also, Scott's so fair that he'll figure out a way to make that happen if there's two people. Because I think you're right. Sometimes people take the course, but they want somebody else to actually do the legwork, an assistant at work or a spouse or a kid or whatever else, because putting the kids together is relatively straightforward. Yeah, so that can always be made to happen. And again, I, even though we're focusing on the corporate sales, the rest of the course will really help people. It talks at length about how to garner podcast coverage, how to put your book together, a lot of the mistakes people make. And I think when people watch the samples, they'll get a real feel for how different the course is. There's a lot of humor in the course. There's a lot of insights they haven't heard anywhere else. And I think what it's done for people who've taken it, we've had tremendous numbers take it, is it's changed their mindset. It sounds dramatic, but it really has. We get that feedback all the time. They all of a sudden see all the possibilities out there. There are a lot of ways to market books. There are a lot of ways to distribute books. And so we talk in a very, very open way about all the different things we've done. And again, I don't think they're genius, but they are different. And you haven't heard of other people doing them. And the common thread among all the advice is the attention to detail. It's very, very detailed on how to do exactly what we did, what color of envelope to use. So again, it's almost obsessive compulsive, but it's because we've tested these things ad nauseum. We know what works and what doesn't work. But Guys, I have to tell you that when I first started taking this course, and I took it just to, to check it out, I figured it was for beginners. I mean, there's no way that anyone could teach me anything. I, you know, I, I, I'm a marketing expert. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. I learned so much. It did change my mindset. It shifted my thinking on so many items. And it changed the kind of successes that I could have for my authors. I highly recommend that you check out Dave Chilton's course. David, what is the actual full name of the course? It's the called Chilton the Chilton Method. Method. It might be the least clever name ever developed for a course. I want to go on record as saying I did not come up with that. It's called the Chilton Method. And again, we do have a very unusual approach and it's at thechiltonmethod.com and you've got the link to go through you. And, and again, I, I've been thrilled with the feedback. Like when you look at the testimonials on the site, they're pretty mind blowing. And a lot of them are from very notable people in the publishing field and lots of others are from users, et cetera. So I'm, I'm so glad it's had the impact it has. I mean, obviously the biggest thrill when you put all this work in is getting these letters from people who garnered corporate sales or got on major TV shows and how we did what we did, et cetera. So it's been a lot of fun and I enjoy putting it together as well. It took me down memory lane, certainly thinking of all the things we've done in the past. And we talk about a lot of things we did that didn't work and we try to save people the time of pursuing them. And I explain why they didn't work, et cetera, because you can really get caught, get caught in a lot of rabbit holes down there where they just aren't going to be as effective as you think. So I think people will like all of that. And again, the videos are fun to watch. There's a lot of humor. They're very different from every perspective. And it is so inexpensive. When you think about everything that's out there, it's less expensive than one of those catalog listings we were talking about. Well, we, when we took the course to the American um, production company, they were going to charge $14.99 US for it. And I said, I don't want to do that because I'm not making any money from this. I just want to help as many people as possible. But also, I want to be able to push people so I don't have to help them directly anymore. I'm overwhelmed. So we wanted to make it much less expensive. And that's why Scott took it over and put it out there basically at his cost. But yeah, $14.99 US was what they wanted to charge for it. Now it's, I think, $195 US and $129 US for the corporate sales division if you buy that separately. So, and again, we've been thrilled with the feedback and you've been really good and the fact that you can do a full interview while driving your car down the interstate is really quite stunning you're an amazing <laughs> all right i want to be clear guys i'm parked look oh, you are parked i'm sorry okay, well, that's, I'm much, parked. that's much less talent but anyway it's still, it's still a but far safer i don't want far to get safer yeah, david far you almost safer. got me arrested guys, <laughs> as david said it's 149 dollars for the whole course 129 
for the corporate course, but that's if you go through newshelves.com slash corporate. Uh, Scott and David very generously has, have, has offered us a, uh, and all three Advice Friday listeners a chance to take a look at this course. David, is there anything that I didn't or that my folks didn't ask you that I should have? Because I have to say, I'm feeling, I'm so excited about this. But No, I think, that, I think watching the samples is a great idea. Like, I, I think if people go there and watch them, they'll, they'll get a feel for it. I think one of the things we're proudest of, we did some marketing recently where we, much like this, we offered the corporate sales at 129 or whatever, and the full course at 195. I think almost everybody, 90-something percent of people who bought the corporate sales videos bought the whole course after and ended up changing their order to have the whole course because they liked what they saw. Like, I am very proud of the course, you can tell. I really am. We put a lot of work in on it, and I think it's got insights you're not going to get anywhere else. And, and so I, I'm really hopeful a lot of people take it and benefit from it, more importantly. If you guys have any questions after you've gone to newshelves.com slash corporate and taken a look at some of the sample videos, if you need anything, just email us at info at newshelves.com. I will get you connected with the Chilton Method. I'll get the answers that we need. David, thank you so much for your time today. No, it's always a pleasure seeing you. You've got great spirit and you help a lot of people. So it's good. And, and hopefully you and I will stay friends for another 30 years. Although I don't like my chances for that. But maybe. No, maybe. no, 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 no. It's only been 10 years. I'm only 30 years old. Oh, you are. That's right. You're 30 American. But remember, that is 60 Canadian. So that's really, true. That's, that's yeah. true. Yeah, the, I always get screwed up with the metric. We can't do metric here. <laughs> anyway, I enjoyed today. It was a lot of fun. And thank you so much for having me on again. Thank you. We will see you guys next week, 10 a.m. every Friday morning Eastern here at Free Advice Friday. David Chilton from the Chilton Method. Thank you so much. Thank you.